word around the street is is that you want to get into doubles. Well, there's a couple things that I need to let you know before you even get into it. All right, let's start. Before anything, uh, as I described in my previous video on discovering your sound, you need to find equipment that works. That's the first thing you need to do when trying to go into doubles. Obviously, you know, when you start on a specific instrument, you already have like your own set of equipment for that specific instrument. However, you also have to take in consideration that you're gonna have to literally buy a clarinet, literally buy a flute that works, you know, that is in tune decently and that you can use for practice for years before upgrading and this, this sort of thing. But that's a whole other conversation. Yeah! So, uh, at the moment, I'm going to tell you what I have as far as equipment, and then we can talk about each instrument individually. So, on saxophone, I got a Super Balanced Action uh, tenor, a 54,000 uh, series number. I got, I just been going through these two mouthpieces, the Selmer Soloist and a Jumbo Java from Van Doren, a T95, just being between those two things, and also this, this ligature. Um, if you've been up to date with my social media. And that's for tenor. For alto, I got a Berg Larsen, I think. Yeah, with also an Ishimori, but the bronze ligature, not the usual gold one that everybody gets. A Berg Larsen, this is a balanced action, not a super balanced action. And the serial number is 26,000. Yes, and then reeds, y'all don't need to hear about reeds. Aww. Also, we got a soprano that is from Kessler Custom and Son, uh, a saxophone company basically that makes these really great stencils in Las Vegas. And I got a soprano with a, a berry mouthpiece, not a berry saxophone mouthpiece, a berry brand mouthpiece with just a regular Rico uh, H ligature. And my flute is a Yamaha uh, Silver 481 Series 2 925. So it's an inter intermediate model, basically. And then clarinet. My clarinet is an R13. Sorry, no, the model before an R R13 um, of Buffet. The serial number is 58,000. And then I got a Yamaha over here. Yay! Don't worry, I'm coming back. I got a Yamaha in here. Ooh, I almost slipped. Um, Yamaha. No, sorry, Selmer. 1430 LP uh, bass clarinet, and I don't even know what type of piccolo I have that I got here in the back. Let's see. I don't know if it will say the actual brand number, but, or the brand name, but yeah, I don't know if you can see that actually. Um, it says J something. It's literally a student model because I needed a, a piccolo for a piccolo part in musicals that I would play in, so, but yeah, it's a student model, but anyway. These are the instruments that I play. And then the next thing, after you have equipment for the instruments that you want to learn, the next step is to ask yourself, why in the first place do you want to do doubles? It's like, why do you want to learn to play doubles? And I'll tell you why I do it. So mainly specifically for the, the amount of performance opportunities that I will have in the future. and. It offers a different mindset from the saxophone stuff because I'm usually, not usually, originally I'm a saxophone player and it's kind of, you know, limiting that I'm always thinking of saxophone frame of mind and playing the flute and clarinet and all these different instruments get me out of this mindset so that way I can actually have another perspective to come from when I'm soloing on any instrument really. And as far as performance opportunities are concerned... capable of getting all these instruments together like pretty decently you'll find that a lot of people will start calling you for different things like different uh, opportunities that are outside the jazz idiom in addition to a, a bunch of other opportunities in other styles you know like for example like somebody might call you to do a musical or something or somebody might call you to, to like sub somebody in the, in a concert band or something in a, a rehearsal or uh, somebody might ask you to do a reading and they might even pay you at the reading for a specific, uh, I don't know, if it's like like an event or something and they, and they pay you this sort of thing. What I'm trying to say is that 
by getting into doubles, you're you're basically opening the amount of uh, gigs that you could potentially have in the future if you play all these instruments pretty well, especially within the same family. You're pretty much set. You're basically a band already, you know what I mean? Especially when it comes to recording stuff. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, like, when people ask you to record for stuff, you know, they'll ask you to do a flute part in addition to a tenor part and maybe do a, a solo on clarinet or something while playing a, a bass clarinet bass line or something for recordings and even live performances so it's like it's really fruitful when you get to play in different uh, environments and different settings with different instruments you know but but yes uh, what did I want to say and the only reason why I'm telling you this as far as the performance opportunities is because I knew before when I first started playing music uh, you know only like eight years ago I knew that I wanted to be a versatile musician. I knew I wanted to be in a multitude of settings, playing different types of music. <gasps> to like just open my, you know, my own uh, world of, of music that I enjoy. Because I enjoy a lot of music, like as I described before in, in previous videos. But what I'm trying to say now is that because if you have so many interests and consider yourself a person that wants to be versatile in the future then learning doubles is for you that's just that's just the like a gateway into other styles and into other uh, even cultures too like do you know how many like Asian flutes or Indian flutes you know any any denominations of these different types of flutes and I don't even want to get into the recorders that's like a whole other thing including like these kind of like exotic instruments that are in the woodwind family you know what I mean from different countries so it's like it's really killing like all these different instruments that you'll be able to find or like from around the world uh, that's just so interesting to me and if this sounds like something you want to do then yeah then go ahead for doubles now the second thing that I was talking that I wanted to talk about was the aspect of having a, a different mindset you know a different mindset of playing because you know obviously when we get into like for example I'm a saxophone player when I started playing saxophone um, I did as we all did just basically going into learning about the the best people on my instrument and learning through transcriptions and through listening and etc 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 and then eventually developing like this kind of like saxophone perspective like playing from a saxophone frame of mind and once I got started on the saxophone, I knew not only getting into doubles would kind of open up my, my saxophone playing, but then in vice versa, it will translate in the opposite way. Like on clarinet, it's really easy to do huge leaps, you know, because the, the clarinet, each octave is separated by a 12. So like C, like low C, like how it feel on saxophone is actually F. You know what I mean? So it's like you're, you're, you're thinking and, and huge leaps all the times and which can translate really nicely into saxophone and the same thing for flute obviously it's really hard on on those other two instruments but like it's just another another aspect of playing that you can access when you're soloing you know and the same thing with flute like like trill keys for example that you know use uh use trilling of two notes you know or just like kind of doing this like second movement into other notes you know and uh, on flute, that's really easy. Like trill, I mean, you have trill keys. I mean, the saxophone has trill keys as well, but they're not easily as accessible as you would be able to on, on flute. So it's like these, t like, you know, really different mindsets from different instruments, and then you'd be able to translate them into your primary instrument which would be saxophone or, you know, clarinet or flute or whatever you start with, you know? And that's that's really cool, just being able to think uh, like a flute player or like a clarinet player and play saxophone or uh, be a flute player and, you know, vice versa, like think like a saxophone player, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it sets you apart from from most saxophonists that, that play the instrument or sets you apart from those who play the instrument that you play in general. What is your goal with each of these instruments? Like I'll give you an example of myself. So on saxophone, I want to be as technically proficient as I possibly can to the highest level. And with flute and clarinet, I know I'm not going to be a classical flute error clarinet player, but I would like to get my technical proficiency as good so that I may be a sub for like a chamber ensemble, like a quintet, a quartet, flute trios, clarinet trios, quartets, etc, 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 so I can sub out for a classical friend of mine and have no problem. 
or be able to sit in with like an orchestra during a pops gig or even like an actual classical gig but like play the third chair you know like the one of the easiest parts you know not saying that the third chair is the easiest part in an orchestra for all those people who play classical music and are watching these videos but you know more often than not at least in my experience from playing in orchestras because I have done that before those are usually the easiest parts and then like especially third clarinet you know so depending on what the piece is that's the level of proficiency that I want to be. You have to realize when you get into learning doubles, you, you have to have like a certain goal in mind because otherwise then you're just going to be prioritizing one instrument over the other or two instruments over the other. Or get so stressed out that you don't even want to practice at all. So it's like, it's also a time management thing. Obviously, you have three instruments to practice, right? Or even more if you play even more woodwinds, you know? Uh, I don't play like bassoon or, or oboe, but literally bassoon is like one of my favorite instruments. So that's like the next thing on my list. Yeah, but but just just taking into consideration like how much time you have to dedicate to each instrument. Obviously, when when you start playing more, and when like I said, when this pandemic is over. You'll, you'll practice one instrument more for certain things. Like say if somebody calls you for like a flute part or a bassoon part or something like that, uh, you know, for like a whole week, you'll probably practice more flute in preparation for that gig that corresponds to that specific instrument. You know, the one that you're gonna utilize the most. It's like, it's levels, you know, you just have to realize which instruments you have to prioritize depending on the setting and how much time you're willing to dedicate to each instrument every single day because these are really time consuming and very meticulous instruments so it's better to dedicate at least 15 minutes 30 minutes on one technical thing or one melodic thing or one musical thing than not practicing any of them when you're specifically tired or you don't have time to practice you know so then you make time you just have to assess your goals like what are you trying to get out of each instrument well, it's the end of the video. I, if you like the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe because I put one video out every week on Saturday and you don't want to miss them. I'll see you in the comments and have a good day and happy shedding.